Hello. So, my first step here is I'm going to open up a blank project in FL Studio. My preset is with just the sampler open. This effect is going to generate a lot of notes in a very confined space. So, I'm going to want to use kind of a pluck sound. So, I'm going to come over to my generators and I'm going to pick a um, citrus instance. In the presets, I'm going to select default. I'm going to highlight operator 1 in under volume and envelope. I'm going to activate the envelope and I'm going to change the shape to that of a pluck. Great. So, next step, we come into piano roll. We're going to highlight the region of piano roll. I'm going to set it to 180 because that's where I'm most comfortable. We're going to highlight the region of piano roll that we want to generate the random randomness. For your snap to grid, you could probably get away with using none. I'm going to use one six step because that's what I like. It yields the best results for me. Come to randomizer. Oh, yeah. So with this, I recommend playing it and then coming in and hitting randomizer because it's going to freeze up your interface so you can't really play it. Cool. Problem. It's going to sound like this when you first boot it up. That doesn't sound great. <laughs> so I pick one of these minor sevens that works. Population will adjust the amount of notes in the given selection that you've made. Stack, I think stack will render another 100% of the random uh, chord selection you've made here, and then it'll stack another instance of that, depending on your... Population. It basically just increases the value of notes. These two pertain to the value of notes. Uh, these length and variation. Variation is the variation of length. Length is the overall length multiplier, length coefficient, whatever you want to call it. Octave will increase or decrease the octave, and range increase or decrease the range. It's pretty straightforward. Levels here. Um, these are pertaining to the uh, velocity control. So, these are pretty fun overall to play with. Maybe even a little bit of pitch variation. So there's a lot of fun tools to play with here. This seed is arguably the most important part of this. This seed and these note selectors. So now that I've got something that I like, I'm going to come over to the next region in my piano roll that I would like there to be chords. I'm going to, again, start with that little wrench. I guess the short keyboard shortcut's Alt-R, but... I don't really use keyboard sh shortcuts too much. Come in here, one six step, randomize. Again, so we have that minor seventh, but it sounds the same, you'll notice, as the previous, so you can change the C. And come in here, I'm gonna choose uh, major seven. Beautiful. Maybe increase the population a little bit. It's going to keep these levels enhance enhancements. Um, the secret power of this, what if you don't want, what if you're making a drum loop and you just want to change the randomization of your uh, velocity? Or you don't want to touch the velocity, so either way it works great. Um, an important note, let's say the chord that you want to use isn't necessarily in. Well, actually, we'll get to that later. 
my my point was that these are grouped so if you try to move them it's going to move them all at once the way to get rid of that is to control a group ungroup and that'll make them free to move them around so that's great but if we come to our mixer and we play this we can notice that it's quickly saturating the sound um, it's, it's, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot going on here. I'm not gonna go on yet. So we want to flatten out that curve. If we really want to use this in effect without it being too loud. I'm gonna use the Kill Hearts compressor, but you could use literally anything just to compress it. That makes it a little easier on the ears. You could also just turn down the volume. That helps as well. So that's great. So we now we have this, this sound. But what if we want to modulate it a little bit? We can do that as well. So I'm going to come over into Citrus. I'm going to activate this first filter. Also, we're just going to turn off the default effects because they sound nice. A little stereoizer in there too. So this now enables us to have a filter here. Um, if you like, you can go crazy, add an envelope to the filter. Maybe even another generator. This is very direct, there's no, it's not very spacey yet. So what we can do is we can go and add some delay. Maybe a little time mod modulation. I don't know about the fusion. And what the hell? Well, that's a favorite. Great. So we have this sound now, and we change the cut. See it changes the sound. It's really rather nice. Um, another symptom of this is is it a lot of you can see it's hovering dangerously in one spot of our dynamic range. So we probably get rid of that. Try to spread it out a little more. Another reason why to use FL Studio, you can populate two monitors with your windows instead of just one, so it's not so cluttered. Alright, great. So, I will be crediting u slash uh, Cooper Lathy, C double O P E R L A E T H E. His name will be in the title and the description to be sure. Um, he is the one who discovered this effect and used it in a song of his, which is very beautiful. So, let's say this this trick is cool, but let's say you have chords that they don't necessarily you can't find them in that in that chord selector, or you don't even know what they are. 
Um, so, fun fact, you can save scores without having to export them to MIDI in FL Studio, which I think is very nice. So, right here I've got um, a score of chords. Cool. So, I don't really necessarily have any way of easily figuring out what these are without flexing some music theory muscle that I don't have. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a new instrument. It can be anything, uh, but I usually just default to FL keys because. I like it. So come over here, control A, control C, select over here, it'll gray all these notes, control V, hold alt, hover over one of the notes, scroll down, that'll decrease the attack so you won't even hear it. That's why I say it doesn't really matter. Your point is you just kind of want to get that blank outline, that shadow in the back. So, our next step is to come over and randomize. I tried, I, there probably is a way to make it fit to my chord, but I couldn't figure it out. I tried for a whole 30 minutes <laughs> to making this video. So then you have same setting as before. There are six notes here, so I'll probably just six. Couldn't hurt. Again, we are faced with the same parameters. But the only difference here is what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here. I'm going to highlight. Oh, important. These are all going to be grouped. Which, I mean, whatever. So. I'm going to control A, again, go into group, ungroup, there we go. Cool. So, neat part about this is you can just kind of drag them wherever you want to go. Wherever you think they belong. Align them with the shadow notes that you have. And that will make them fit the uh, chord progressions that you want, even if they don't necessarily ha have a slot or a selection in the uh, randomized chord selection menu. Because you kind of have to, you know, it's like Miss Mr. Potato, Mr. Potato Head mixing here. Uh, be sure that as little as possible overlap. Kind of have to do your diligence. It's kind of a tedious manual way of doing it, but it works. So <laughs> it's possibly the worst way. If anybody has a better way of figuring this part of it out. But that's that uh, twinkle effect. It'll probably work better with other generators other than Citrus. Probably works well with Serum too. If I can find it. I always hate this menu because I lose my plugins or if I update FL Studio. Serum does have that issue. If you decrease the attack to zero, it'll click. 
Citrus doesn't have that issue. Anyway, that's basically the end of this tutorial. That's the uh, Sparkle Effect, Twinkle Effect, um, by U slash Cooper Levy. But, I mean, FL Studio Image Line makes the software, so. Anyway, thank you to him for discovering it, and thanks for watching.